Hey everyone, welcome to the final episode here of my Simple Cube Ultra. This is what I'm calling V1. This printer is going to be disassembled and I just kind of wanted to outline where this printer is going and that type of thing, kind of update people on YouTube. Um, first and foremost, I have a Discord. If you're interested in the Simple Cube printers, definitely feel free to join Discord. I have a V2 channel that has information on this printer, what's coming for V2, the updates I'm doing, that type of thing, but I'll, I'll walk people through here as well. So I'm discontinuing this printer. Um, mechanically, it's done. I don't really think there's any point for people to print this one out, in my opinion. Now, the files are up on GitHub. If you wanna print this out, go for it definitely the printer works um th there's no real problems with it it just makes sense for me to incorporate some upgrades i want to do in and, and kind of start fresh but i will like i say uh this printer is up on github um it's just kind of eventually going to be become legacy and and uh won't be supported type kind of type deal so um so for v2 what what's happening with v2 why am i switching things out so I really did like HBOT. It seemed to work just totally fine, especially with a printer with all linear rails. I think it's a, a very nice um, motion uh, kinematics. Um, I am switching to Core XY. There's a couple reasons I'm doing this. First and foremost, um, it's difficult to find 10 millimeter belts and pulleys. And I really think HBOT excels when you have nice wide belts, very robust belt system. These pulleys here, they're already failing. Um, bearings are starting to squeak and that type of thing. And that's kind of a common issue on a lot of idlers and pulleys and stuff like that. They're just not very robust. They don't have very beefy bearings and stuff like that in them. So while this works well printing slowly, that type of thing, I would much prefer move over to like a Core XY using doubled up six millimeter belts. It's much easier to find parts for it and um, it's just simplified in that sense. The next reason I'm going to Core XY is I am switching over to the AVA tool head. So that is a, basically a open source tool head design. Ratrig uses this. Um, it's very, very modular and very, very um, customizable to the user. So you can use the AVA hot end and you can put on, of course, any hot end you like that they support, which is very common hot ends, you know, Rapido, Revo, um, E3D V6 hot ends, Mosquito. Um, <clears throat> I think they even support the Nova hot end. Like any hot end you want to use, very easy, easily uh, swappable. Uh, the plate that they use is universal, so you can just attach on your 3D printed module for the hot end. Boom, you're good to go. A uh, big thing too is the extruder. They support all sorts of different extruders. Orbiter 1, Orbiter 2, uh, Sherpa Mini. They support just a full-on BMG extruder right here. You can use whatever stepper motor you want. They support LGX, LGX Mini. Um, like, again, it's so customizable, and that's a big thing with Simple Cube is not only is the printer meant to be very simple, I want it very versatile for kind of any scenario. And the AVA toolhead makes sense for a lot of reasons. So the next reason really for Core XY is again, flexibility, like I just talked about. If someone wants to print fast or slow, Core XY serves both of those purposes. And it just makes more sense to move to that platform. Um, again, I was really happy with HBOT, but uh, the cost doesn't really increase really any at all to move over to Core XY. Um, and I think in the long run, it just gives users more flexibility. And that's kind of what I want on this printer. So, so yeah, that's kind of a, a really big change. Again, uh, Core XY, V2, and AVA Toolhead, where it allows just way more flexibility for, for users. Um, the second big change is I am going to be changing the frame. Um, still keeping with the uh, kind of goals of Simple Cube, the frame is going to be still uh, very straightforward, standard uh, 2020 extrusions. I am changing up these um, 
vertical extrusions here, they're going to be much taller so that I can include close the build area. Again, you don't have to enclose it. I'm not going to provide like panels or anything or, or even much in that sense uh, really right off the get-go. Um, however, if someone did build the Simple Cube uh, Ultra version 2, they could certainly enclose it very easy if they wanted to. <clears throat> All the motors and everything will be moved inside. Idlers will be moved inside. The printer is going to have a much cleaner look. It, it just makes a lot of sense. So essentially for the version I'm doing, I'm disassembling this whole printer and I, I basically ordered um, 450 millimeter vertical extrusions here so that I can actually have an enclosed um, top here if I want to. I'm going to reuse basically all the parts from this printer. I also have to move to MGN 9 rails. So again, two rails, uh, pretty straightforward. MGN 12 stick outside the build area. There's nothing I can do about that. MGN 9 a little bit uh, cheaper too. And um, really there's, there's no loss. It's still going to be an MGN 12 for the X for sure. Um, but MGN 9s, they'll now fit into the build area inside the build uh, size. So. Yeah, it's going to be, um, I still have some tweaking and things to do. I have a CAD model set up with kind of the lengths of extrusions and things like that. I'm toying around with the idea of just make, maybe making a standard frame size that would support 220 and 300 um, build volumes. I don't know yet. I do kind of want to make a compact version kind of like this. So that's kind of why I'm sticking with the 300 millimeter um, horizontal extrusions but the vertical ones will be 450 like I say and then that way you're going to have basically two layers these will still be here supporting the linear rails but you'll actually have another four going around the top here so like I say you can enclose this if you so choose just gives much more flexibility to the user and it doesn't really increase the cost the entire frame for this printer is about $80 Canadian it's super inexpensive so yeah that's uh that's kind of the upgrades that are coming for that. Um, I'm really happy with the Z. I, I don't plan on changing anything with the Z. The only thing I am doing, of course, is I'm moving the Z to the sides so that this is nice and open. Also, extending the frame higher, I'm removing this bar here. It's not needed. You'll get a much better view of the printer. Again, it's going to be a much cleaner looking printer and I'm very excited to see what, what it looks like when I start assembling it. So again, not changing the Z as far as how it works. However, I am moving the linear rails out to the sides so that you get much more open area here. Okay. And uh, again, another reason why I'm moving to Core XY is uh, I've already ordered the bearings here. These are uh, standard, uh, Voron uses the same bearings. I'm going to be using these bearings throughout the motion system. And these uh, bearings are very, very robust, much more robust than a simpler idler would be. This will increase the actual um, robustness of the printer as a whole, and these bearings will last a lot longer. So <laughs> that's nice there too. Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, um, this is kind of the status on the V1. Like I say, it's done. I'm not doing anything else with it. it it's a fully functional printer. It's a great printer. I'm really happy with a lot of design features. I think V2 can just be that much better, get a nice, uh, nicer frame, move everything inside, make things a little bit more rigid here and there. Uh, we'll go to Core XY, that way if you want to print super fast, you can. You can enclose the printer if you want. Um, the Ava tool head, it's a little bit more compact. Um, you know, it just, it just makes a lot of sense. We give users much more flexibility and um, I'm hoping to see, you know, people develop mods for this. It'd be really nice to get like a clicky probe on here, maybe a Euclid probe, things like that. There's a lot of cool things that we can do and I'm really hoping to grow the community. So like I say, there's a link to the Discord below if you want information on V2. I've got some teaser pictures on there from my CAD design. I'm probably 75% done. Like I say, it's it. most of the Z's are already done. It's just changing this to core XY, moving some things inside, that type of thing. So again, uh, I really appreciate everyone subscribing. Uh, thanks. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's work on uh, V2 and uh, let's start a community up on the Discord. Thanks everyone.